celebrate the life of the beloved Joel Fagan. So let's try that again. Good afternoon, everyone. Some glad morning I shall see Jesus in the
We pray that the songs, the scripture reading, the words from your man's servant will go forth with clarity and that men and women will come to know you whom to know is life eternal. We come in the Stephen's program in thy land. May everything be done. want to extend our condolences to the family and it is our prayer that God will give you the strength and that you will go through your grieving process in a normal way. It is also our prayer that whatever will be done this afternoon will be a means of helping to bring closure, helping to help you cope with your loss. We hope that the songs the scripture, the message from the Lord will, of course, assist you as you go through your time of grieving. And so we will proceed with this afternoon's program. We'll have the first lesson, which is taken from Psalm 90, verse 1 through 12, which be done by Antoinette Fagan. And this will be followed by a selection by Sister Rosie. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a bit nervous, so my sister will be assisting me today. And today's first lesson will be taken from Psalms 90, verses 1 through to 12. I'll be reading verses 1 through to 6, and my sister will be reading 7 to 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the, wor the world word for e from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in, thy, in your sight are like day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by the evening it is dry and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our arts unto wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord, everybody. The Lord. On behalf of the Fagan family, which is a part of my sister, husband that passed away, I will just try and sing this song in Jesus' name. 
Quarth a day, glorious day that had be. Here come in a day when no heart shall come, not a cloud. That she was singing about. You don't know about that day? Do you know about that day? If you know about that day, then just say, What a day. Are you looking forward to that day? Then say, What a day. What a day. What a day. Glorious day that will be. Thank you very much, my sister. 
At this time, we will know of our second lesson, which is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. And this will be done by Raynell Jenmison. And this will be followed immediately by a selection by Stacy McLean. everyone. My name is Raynell Jemison, and I am here to read 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, bridging that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth or, com or corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I shew your mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all change. In a moment, in twinkling of an eye, at last trumped, for a trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and shall be changed incorruptible. For the, in, for the corruptible must put in corruption, and mortal put, must put on incorruptible. Immortable, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put shall have put in mortal in mortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written that is swallowed up into victory. O that where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth his victory through our through Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unremovable, always beyond singing, always beyond in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in your vein in the Lord. Afternoon, everyone. Come on, man. It's right to mind be feeling down, man. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Sounding better. Um, you know, I'm gonna minister this song to you, but whenever I go to settings like this, I always tell myself that the person is sleeping, and 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 those who am I gonna witness or minister to in song must have a hearing to hear that. There is a God and there is hope and don't worry about what is happening. We know that he's soon coming king. He's going to release and let us smile again. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Over again, many songs. My strength is surely failing as trials come both left and right. And in the center I'm now standing Not a trace of hope inside And if tears were only raindrops The universe would be flooding now So Lord I call you Don't pass me by. Hold my hands today, lest I fall. Guide my steps all the way. Please hear my call for the. Oh, I ask of thee. 
All right, at this time we'll be doing some tributes and uh, we will do one, two, three in this order. We have the first one, which will be done by Sharon Fagan, that's daughter. Then we have one by the counselor, Mrs. C. Benjamin. And then this will be followed by the Church of God of Prophecy, Boys Content. We proceed in this order.
All right, I get to understand that Mrs. Benjamin is not here as yet. She's on her way. So we'll roll on to the Church of God of Prophecy, voice content. this song. I know that Mr. Fagan is in the castic at this moment and he cannot hear. The blood run cold. He cannot see, he cannot hear. But I believe this congregation, you and me, can hear this song and understand. Because we are living in two days, praise God, and living in this world and go home without a hope then our living is just all in vain. So thank God that we may listen to the word of the song. Yes. Not listen to the voice, but the word of the song. Loved ones in glory is waiting for me Just inside that gate Some golden morning their face we shall see Just inside that gate will be shouting and singing up there glory forever with them we shall share when we shall enter that mansion so fair inside the beautiful gates just inside beautiful gates their rest friend anxiously waits Angels bright, angels of light, robe and white, purest of white. Oh, it will be such a glad day, a wonderful, wonderful day. Enter the home, beautiful home inside the of gold just inside that gate where with that ransom we live I am told just inside the gate we shall rejoice in the ages is roll hoping to greet us some wonderful day beautiful home where the angels are told inside that beautiful gates just inside that beautiful gates there is friend anxiously waits angels rise angels of life robe and white purest of white oh it will be such a glad day Wonderful day, enter that home, beautiful home inside that beautiful gate. We shall see Jesus, so oh, praise his name, just inside that gate. All through that ages his grace will proclaim, just inside the gate. Angels and loved ones are looking this way, hoping to greet us some wonderful day. When we move over to heaven to stay inside that beautiful gates, just inside beautiful gates, there. 
shows we wait. Angels Christ, angels of light, yes, robe and white, purest of white, oh, it will be such a glad day, yeah, yeah, wonderful, yes, wonderful day. Enter that home, beautiful home inside that beautiful gate. Just inside, beautiful gate, there is friend, anxiously waits, angels bright, angels of light, robing white, purest of white, oh, it will be such a glad day, yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful day, enter that home, beautiful home inside that beautiful guest. Praise the Lord. Did they enjoy that one? Yes, man, and she does a rock, so rock, so rock, so rock, so. And can you imagine, sister, not listen to the voice? If I have a voice like that, I may not stop singing. The voice is good. And I can see that she's of age. But of course, you know, I'm hoping that when I reach her years, I can say, sing and rock and move. So. She eats some good old time. Come on, the coco and Barbie, yeah, man, go, go. In a coconut, yeah, yeah, native co yes. the young people them don't know that them thing then. But um, daddy wouldn't like me and know them type of food. Eh? So that's why she can just inside the beauty. He'll praise the name of the Lord. All right, um, I understand that counselor Mrs. C. Benjamin is here. So at this time, we invite her to come forward and give her tribute. Praise the Lord. God is indeed a good God, isn't it? So to the officiating ministers and all of you, seated in the audience this afternoon, family and friends, and to the family, my deepest condolence to you. I was so saddened when I heard of the death of my friend, Jaja. A Jaja man, me call him, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> and he's a, he's a friend of mine, and uh, I'm really, I was really sad when I heard that he passed. And so my deepest sympathy to the family of Mr. Fagan. You know, there is a common saying that love is stronger than death. But even as strong as love is, it can prevent death. If it could, then we wouldn't have been here this afternoon. Because I know that Judge Man have a lot of love. His children love him, grandchildren love him, me love him, so he wouldn't die. But love cannot prevent death. But once death comes, love is still there. Because sometimes we talk about our loved one after they are passed as if they are still here. I lost my father three years ago. I was talking about daddy yesterday in church as if he's still alive. So that's what we talk about when we talk about love. And so this afternoon, I just want to say to the family, you see, death is sure. And when I go to funerals and I tell them that death is sure, it is an appointment. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after death. Because a lot of people believe that when you're dead, that's it. It's the end to another beginning. And so if we don't live a life that is pleasing to God here and now, after we're dead, then that's the end of it. But if we live a life that is pleasing to God, then after death, there shall be life again. Amen? So I'm just saying to all of us, as you grieve family members, don't grieve as those who have no hope, for there is hope in Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And just cherish the memories that you have of Jajaman. You know, every time you see me, he, he addresses me as queen. 
I may feel good, you know, man. And so most times when, when, when we met up, it's done by Dorothy's shop, you know. And he said, walk me queen, walk me princess. And I don't try to get into an argument with him because I can't win. I don't know if you know, but I can't win an argument with him. And when him start and start telling me some things, me have to laugh. And him laugh after me sometimes too. Because him said, judge a girl, you know, queen, you know, you know, really have their meds there. You know, reach to their levels there. But sometimes he said, me arrest a man too, you know, man, so you can't tell me. He said, no, I am. So, you know, we had a good little relationship. And he's my friend. And I really miss him. But as I said, Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I say to you, hope in God. And whatever you are going through, God understands every heart and pain. He knows why he took him away in this time. And so let us embrace each other. And as we have life, let us love one another. Because a holy power, you know, we just wait till funeral when we talk, oh, we love Jaja man. And we never did even care about him when he was alive. We passed him and we don't say, how did he do? You know, it, it, it is a sad state that we're in that we, we don't even love each other again. If somebody step on your toe, you know, the, you, you, if, if you step on my toe, me I tell you sorry, you know. And you step on my toe, but me I say, sorry, my sister, that's all right, man. Because I don't know what next will happen. And so let us just love one another because the word is love. And for God so loved the world. And that love, he said, let brotherly love continue. So let all of us share the love whilst we are alive. Tell your mother, tell your father, tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your cousin, tell your neighbor, tell your friend, I love you. When you say I love you, say it from the heart. God bless you. I love you. Thank you very much. If you notice, there are two open slots for tribute. But I want to let you know that we are talking about Daddy Wood. And uh, not too long ago, Daddy Wood said, I'm a friend, you know. We want to say a few words. So tribute number four has been already taken by Brother Weir or Daddy Weir, Brother Perry. And there is still one open one for anyone who wants to say something. Then you can just come right after um, Brother Perry, that a wear. And I must tell the family I like your colors. It brings, you know, some sunshine, although it's this occasion. And it tells me that that a wear was fruitful and he multiply and hard and everything. If that's the family in that color. Yeah, but your colors are looking good. It brings some sunshine. That a wear, Brother Perry, will come forward now. Good evening, church. Yes, I couldn't sit down there and not say something about German. German is my friend. When I say my friend, is my friend. The two of us join Rasta from Real Little Boy. Yeah, man, there are plenty of people who know say me was Rasta. The two of us join Rasta together. And it go on and go on till one time, one Sunday morning, we go down at Tambran Tree, that whole down at Keys, go beard. And when we come up at the shop, until I'll take off my hat and rub my head, and I say, well, but the lady make me head sin, man. So I say to the man, say, me I go trim and grow back, you know. He say, no, man. I say, yes, man. And me really go trim in Monday morning, me left and go trim. And afterward, now, by the next week, we go join, we go start join police. Well, and me and him up and down, seeing where we drink, we rum, we burn, we weed. Up and down with two of us. Me up on my place where him I got buried there. 
and him come and him is there with me. Some long, long time, the two of us is there. That man no care how you see him drink your rum. Him no drunk, five in junk, him lie down. But him never lie down yet. Him always the on foot or anything you say to your man. Him no say no. He say, yes man, yes man. Sometime all in the night and me wake him up and say, so and so man. He say, yes your man, yes man. That man, I could never sit there and I come and say something about your man. If a man see him there, I wouldn't say he have a junk. He not a drink a rum and he not drunk. For him always, him always stand up man. No care how he drink a rum, he still stand up. We had him up a wood and we was there so tell him he was going to leave, go to Burgers and him go around at his home. And after me at, at Burgers, me come back for him, he said, German, you want to come back with me? About? Yes, man. And we down there for a good time again. One of him son come and say, why them next one want to see him come up, you know? So, me come and for making go up. That time not, not still go so. So after we come up and see him up here in say, German, no, no go say no, nobody never tell him man to come for me, you know, sir. So, me say, well, you want to come back? He say, yes, German, we want to come back. So, me promise him, say, me coming back for him, but me never come back for him. And he is there, so till when we realize and you know, say, him die. But I just say, May the peace of God, which pass an understanding with the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, will keep his heart and mind, and that his heart and soul may ever and forever be with the Lord. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with him and give him peace. Love you, man. When me hear that, would, me I say, I wonder if that would know that me not relax me here. Make all the while in see me putting on in me here. But anyway, if, to the family, me I know I said family. Come if you call tiny auntie. So, you no know, worry. God is good and God can do all things. And he might give you the strength if you go through. I two years now, me lose my first daughter. And see me here. A God, you have to just depend upon God and he will give you the strength if you go through. So you don't worry on yourself. One day, you know, we see your father again. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so long and rough. So far from home, so far from shore, I set out in search of a reason to go on, and there I found. 
Looking forward to that rest, just lift your hands and say, Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. We shall rest in the eye of the storm. Thank you very much. At this time, we now lift an offering in aid of the community services department um, of this church. So I'm going to ask our deacons or those who are asked to. Collect the offering to please take up your respective position. The offertory image, oh, I want to see him. But before we actually start the singing and the collection, I 
I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads and assume an attitude of prayer while we give thanks for what we are about to receive. Gracious Father, we thank thee for your many blessings upon us. We pray now that as we lift this offering, that you will bless it. We pray in a special way that it will go to the cause for which it is collected, and that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as I journey through this land, singing as I go. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many are is my soul, from without within. But my Lord leads me on through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Lift my voice. Cares are past, oh, my last ever to rejoice when in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan's snare may vex my soul. Turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads me water. Everybody know, oh, I want to see him, to look up on his face. Sing it now, dare to sing forever of his saving grace. Kiss our past, oh my last, never to return. I say, oh, I want to see him and upon this way. Of his saving grace on the streets of glory, let me live my Cares are past, oh my last, ever do it. I want to hear again, oh I want to see him, to look upon him. Put those hands together now. Ever of his saving grace, on the streets of glory, let me live my At this time, we will just take a journey along memory lane. And of course, along this lane, you will hear all about Joel Fagan. So at this time, to take us along memory lane, we have Mrs. Adassa Fagan. But this will be read by Joan Fagan. So at this time, she'll come forward. Good afternoon, everyone. Remembrance for Joel Fagan. 
Joel Fagan affectionately called Daddy Hood, German, Chippy, was born in the beautiful parish of Clarendon from the union of Zephaniah and Sylvina Fagan. He is the sixth of seven children who pre predeceased him. He was schooled at the Rock Elementary School in Mitchell's Hill, Clarendon. After his graduation, he started to do farming, which became his trade from which he earned his living. He was a naturalist, being a Rastafarian. He had a quiet demeanor and was loved by his family. The time came when he became lonely and fell in love with Miss Tiny Johnson. Their relationship was very fruitful and they had eight children and a stepchild. Miss Tiny predeceased Jaman and he continued to care for their kids. He loved to have fun and would go to parties and funeral services and other social gatherings. Chippy loved his white rum and would make sure he had a little in his back pocket. Chippy, he would address his nieces and other ladies as queen or pretty queen. His niece, Maxine, had a close relationship with him and he would share his concerns with her. When anyone conversed with him, he would reply by saying, a true man, even if they were ladies. He was admired by his community members for his small stature and long black locks. When his brother, Calvin, otherwise called Galan, died, he came to me and said, I am your brother-in-law and I want you to marry again. But you must not marry a black man, marry a white man. <laughs> we share a healthy laugh. We always have heated discussions about the Bible when he would quote certain scripture. I tell you that he could read very well. As life went on, his health started to deteriorate. His children took him to the doctor and he was admitted to hospital where he had a surgery and after, not long after, he died. Left, he is sadly missed and will continue to be by all of us. The community will not be the same without him. A void will be left in the family. May his soul rest in peace. Or we are grateful to have with us this afternoon our pastor, Pastor Melvin Parker, who is the pastor of the Barton District of Churches, which include Boys Content, Barton's SD, Red Ground, and Browns All SD. He is the one whom God has chosen to present a message of hope to you this afternoon. With a prayer in our heart, and we know that the Lord will use him in no uncertain way. But before he comes to us with the message for this afternoon, we'll be favored with a selection in song. Good afternoon, everyone. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars shall.
sweet light in his eyes shall enhance those who await him and we We shall be shall be We shall be I bring, I bring you greetings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I bring you greetings in the name of the one who spoke and it was done. The one who commanded and it stood fast. I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. One who is greater than the beginning. One who is the beginner of the beginning. My beloved friends, today we have come not to a wedding, not to a graduation service, but to a funeral service. And usually at a funeral service, people are sad because we would have lost our loved one. But my friends, I must tell you today that death is certain. The Bible tells us that once we have been born, we have an appointment with a man known as Mr. Death. Mr. Death has no respect of persons. He will come. But I must say to you, my friends, that only Jesus makes the difference. I must say a special thanks to Elder Jackson for his kind words of 
introduction and also for all those who would have participated in the program from we have started until this time, I thank you. Now let me declare to the brethren that Joel Fagan, he is now deceased. He cannot hear me. In fact, he does not know that we are here today. Because the Bible says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead knows nothing. The thoughts are perish. The love is perish. Everything is perish. But I say to you, my friends, you who are looking at me, you can hear me. You can see me. And I must let you know today on the authority of the word of God that there is a message in store for you. I say to all those on the outside, if you might be playing around, I want to beseech you to just direct your attention to the word of God. Because perhaps today might be your last message. Today might be your last opportunity. And we must understand that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. My friends, none of us were made to go to hell. Are we together? When I look at the program, I notice that Joel Fagan was born on October 1, 1943. And he died on May 8, 2022. Based on my calculation, he would have died at the age of 78. If he would have lived to see his birthday, he would have been 79. According to the word of God, my friends, God has given to you and to me, he has given all of us a limit, which is three scores and ten. One score is twenty. So when we add that, we get seventy. But German, a.k.a. Daddy Wood, he would have lived eight years above that mark. And my question is, what did he do with those years? What did he do with the additional years? But I must say, my friends, I don't know if you and I will live to see his age. But I must tell you that all that matters is that we make our calling an election sure. And so I would like to direct your attention to the book of Corinthians. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading verses 20 through to 26. Listen carefully, brethren. It says, as I read from the New King James Version, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Jesus Christ shall all be made alive. For each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Verse 24 says, Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God, to the Father, when he puts an end to the rule and all authority and power. And the Bible says in verse 25, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And the final verse says, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. We're looking at the subject briefly, death will die. Let us pray. Eternal Father, 
The onus has been placed on me to bring words of comfort to your people. Father, I pray that you will touch me from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet. Let every word that comes from my mouth be seasoned by your grace. I pray, O oh God, that your word will fall from my lips and fall on hearts of flesh. I pray that Pentecost will be felt in this place. Men, women, boys and girls will come to know the true and living God. I pray, O oh Father, that your word will come alive in our hearts. And people will know that there is indeed a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Oh, Father God, I pray that you will use me to bring glory and honor to your name. At this time, Lord, I willfully decrease. So please increase. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Death will die. If I were to ask a rhetorical question, do you believe death will die? You see, my friends, death did not just emerge from a vacuum. When we read the book of Genesis, the first book of the Old Testament, we would have seen clearly that God created man from the dust of the earth. God blew the breath in man's nostril and man became a living soul. So breath plus body equal living soul. Breath minus body equal a deceased person. And so, my friends, because of death, everything has been affected. Even leaves started to fall from the trees. The animals started to become ferocious because of sin. Human beings got corrupt because of sin. And because of sin, something had to happen. And so, when the Bible tells us, my friends, but now... Christ is risen from the dead. In order for Jesus to be risen from the dead, he had to die. I want to tell you, my friends, that in order for Jesus to fix the sin problem, he had to die. And so he came to this earth. He came as a baby. He was born in a manger where there were cows and sheep and horses. Jesus, he could not even find a decent bedroom. Jesus was there as a child. He born from the lowest so that he could pull us to the highest. I'm telling you, my friends, that Jesus had to die. He came to this earth. He was nailed on the cross. The nails went deep in his hands and feet. Blood was dripping from his face. Dripping from his beard. They pluck out his beard in harmony with prophecy. Because Jesus had to die. So it is fair to say, my friends, that sin came by one man. And that man's name was Adam. Sin, death, and destruction came through the first Adam. And to the family members, I must tell you, you are grieving because of what the first Adam had done. The first Adam had disobeyed God. The first Adam brought death and suffering and pain and cancer and everything. But I want to tell you about the second Adam. His name is Jesus. And this second Adam is available today. All you've got to do is to pour out your heart to Jesus. Since by one man, Adam, came death. But by the second Adam, Jesus Christ, came life. And my friends, I must tell you straightforward, 
that death is strong. Death is considered to be a powerful enemy. And because death was so strong, Jesus had to come. And I must tell you, my friends, that uh, when Jesus came, uh, one author says uh, that Mr. Death uh, and Mr. Grave uh, made a covenant over the body of Jesus. Now I want for you to understand where I am going. We're speaking about death will die. And to the family members I say, do not grieve as those who are hopeless because there is hope in Jesus. The songwriter says, my hope is built and nothing less. My hope is not built in Haile Selassie. My hope is not built in Donald Trump. My hope is not built in Andrew Holness. My hope is built in Jesus Christ. And today I want to tell someone that only Jesus gives hope. Only Jesus brings true healing. Only Jesus can take us from a place of hopelessness to a place of hope. And so my friends, when Jesus came to this earth, he had to die. And while he was on the cross, he dropped his head in the hall of his shoulder and he cried out some Aramic words, Tetelestai, which means it is finished. And when Jesus died, I must tell you, my friends, that Satan and all his host, they started to sing. They started to rejoice. They were saying, yes, finally, we have killed Jesus. And not only that, my friends, but can I tell you, when they laid Jesus in the tomb, it was a Friday afternoon. Mr. Death ran to Mr. Grave, and Mr. Death says to Mr. Grave, if I kill him, can you hold him? Mr. Grave said, Mr. Death, just send him to me and I will hold him. So when Jesus was in the grave, Mr. Death and Mr. Grave, they hugged each other. They were rejoicing. They were saying, yes, Satan will pay us a good price because I have killed him. And Mr. Grave, I have hold him. He cannot move because he is dead. Satan wasn't pleased. So Satan commanded that some Roman soldiers stood right at the entrance of the tomb. They stayed there in their battalions. They had their swords drawn. No disciple could come near. They were rejoicing. They were having fun. But little didn't they understand that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was just taking a nap. You see my friends, even when Jesus sleeps, Satan cannot defeat him. And if you don't believe me, I want to tell you about this story. One day when Jesus, when he got on the boat, and when he got on the boat, he was feeling exhausted. So he went into the basement of the boat. He was fast asleep and then Satan says okay disciples your Jesus is sleeping we will kill you come wind come wave and kill the disciples and the disciples were crying the disciples were taking out water but Jesus was sleeping I say to you my friends even when Satan throws his best weapon at Jesus he cannot interrupt his sleep so when Jesus was there sleeping, Jesus recognized that his disciples were in trouble. And my friends, when Jesus got up and he looked at the strong waves and the wind, Jesus, he looked, he looked at Mr. Wind and he says, peace, be still. Jesus can still bring peace in your life. Is there war in your life? Jesus is the peace keeper. He is the peacemaker. And all you've got to do is allow Jesus to live in your heart. So my friends, I must say to you, it doesn't matter who you are. I said it before. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter how many letters you have behind your name. One day, death will come. And there are some people saying, I don't need Jesus. Christianity is just pie in the sky. 
by and by. But as soon as sickness starts to, to clamor, every man is calling for Jesus. But I say to you, my friends, you have got to get it right in the sunshine. If you expect it to stay right in the storm, Jesus is not an ATM machine. Understand, my friends, that you can't always go to Jesus only when you are in trouble. Let me conclude this sermon. Back to Jesus in the grave. The disciples had been so confused and disappointed while Satan and his host were rejoicing. And my friends, I must tell you that when Saturday morning comes, Mr. Death ran to Mr. Grave and Mr. Death says, Mr. Grave, I want to know, have you still got this Jesus and Mr. Grave, he just folded his hand and he says, I've got him. He cannot move. He is dead. Man, stop bothering me. He is dead. And so Mr. Death left the scene feeling happy. And then my friends, when it reached uh, Sabbath in the afternoon, for some reason, Mr. Death had developed some doubt. Uh, and so Mr. Death uh, ran back to Mr. Grave and says, have you still got him? At this time, Mr. Grave was feeling so disturbed. So he turned his back and Mr. Death and he did not answer. But then he was persisting. And so Mr. Grave said, okay, have got him. He cannot move. He is dead. This Jesus will be no more. But my friends, I must tell you, on the authority of the word of God, when God the Father... When he called the councils of angels, you must understand, my friends, that in the angels, in the cadre of angels, we have what we call the, the seraphims. And the seraphims, they have six wings. Even when they are in the presence of God, they cannot even look at God. So two of those wings, they cover their eyes and they cried, holy, holy holy and then you have another set of angel which is known as the cherubims and they stayed a little further but they give glory and honor to God so when God called all the counsels of angels when God the father said it is now time for my son to rise again I want to tell you my friends when God the father you see this is an allegory and I want for you to understand the picture that I am painting and when God the Father looked at the angel as it were and God was checking off and God said I want to see which of the angels can go to earth the fastest and so my friends one of the seraphims said oh God I can take 60 seconds and God the Father said 60 seconds uh, that is too fast that is too slow rather that is too slow then, my friends, God was still checking off. Uh, and when God said to another angel, how many seconds can you take? Uh, and that angel says, uh, 30 seconds. But by the time God should turn to the angel Gabriel, when God should say, Gabriel, how many seconds can you take? Uh, Gabriel was already on earth. Uh, the stone was already rolled away. And Jesus, uh, he got up. He walked out and he stopped and says, Mr. Death, oh, Mr. Death, where is your sting? And Mr. Grave was there laughing and he says, Mr. Grave, where is your victory? I was once dead and now I am alive forever and ever and ever. My friend's death has been destroyed when Jesus died. But death has to run its course until Jesus comes again. When Jesus comes again, the book of Revelation tells us there will be no more death. No more pain. To the pagans, no more suffering. No more crying. So trust in the Lord and just know that death and Satan are already defeated. But my Jesus cannot, will never and couldn't be defeated Jesus is sitting on the throne and this same Jesus will come again. I say to you, are you prepared to meet him?
Are you ready to meet him? It doesn't matter who you are. My friends, there's only two groups. And I have to make it clear as I close. It's either you are on the devil's side or you are on the Lord's side. The Bible says, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not scattereth abroad. So it doesn't matter how long you have been going to church. If you have not been washed by the blood of Jesus, you need a touch from Jesus. I say to you, my friends, you don't have to leave the way you came. I know you all come to celebrate the life. I have come to celebrate as well. But I want to tell you, when Jesus is in the midst, the celebration gets sweeter. So let me ask you, my friends, let me ask you, my friends, if you want, if you want to make heaven your home, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. All right, my friends, know that you're raising your hand. Just stand up. Just stand up as you're raising your hand. Just stand up. Don't be afraid. Stand up, my friends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I must tell you, God will judge you differently. Because the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. My name is Pastor Parker, the pastor of this district. Feel free, my friends. We can have a talk. We can have a good talk. So I encourage you to choose Jesus before it's too late. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, not only for now, but forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Word well spoken. And at this time before we, we'll just have a few more items. We'll know of the eulogy which was done by Alicia Sanders, granddaughter. Good afternoon to each and everyone. My name is Alicia Saunders, and I will be reading the eulogy for Grandpa. Born on October the 1st, 1943, to the parents Sylvina Fagan and Zephaniah Fagan in the Keyes' community, laid a bouncing baby boy named Joel Fagan, a.k.a. Jaman or Daddy Wood. We all know schooling begin at home, that's where we all learned the first words. He attended the Rock Elementary School in Mitchell's Town. Mitchell's Hill, sorry. This was where Joel's schooling ended. He was never furthered in the educational journey due to the circumstances and financial support. As the stages of life began to take its course, growing up was not all better of roses but he overcome life's struggles by farming at a tender age. Red peas was his number one crop grown. Joel was a hard worker, always up and about. But he was a ladies' man. Nowadays we say gallus. As life goes on, he met his first true love at Diana Johnson the queen of the pack. When he met Miss Johnson, a lady of shape, class, and quality, he was starstruck. He fell in love at the time. Miss Johnson already had a son. Now this is where life began. They both lived for over 35 years where they both had nine children, six boys and three girls. Now may I ask, wasn't he batting, trying to create a team of their own? They took care of 10 children by farming, but during the battle of life, they lost one of their son at a tender age. But they all know life must go on. During those days, he was one of the first men to own a bike and a Chevrolet Malibu car in those days. I guess he was a brawler. At the time, he acquired the name Jaman because he was growing his locks 
And each time a person called to him, he would reply, yeah, Jaman. No, daddy would. That one I would have to leave for a later date. Jaman is well known for his craft, such as looking after the dead with his companion in those days. He is a man of jewelry. He owned over 30 chains, rings, and bangles until today. Joel was also known for his drinking. He was a man of rum. He would drink as much as he could until he get drunk and give you the sweetest lyrics to your ears. He refers to every woman as pretty queen and pretty daughter, and to every man as king. Now, vaguely speaking, he purchased a piece of land in Brismill and lived there where he operated a small shop. Now he upgraded. On September 9, 2004, he lost his true love at Dinah, where she passed due to illness, leaving his beloved Joel and nine children behind. Now this includes the stepson, the eldest of them all, who never leaves the family out and is still here today. Uncle Garnet, big of herself. And that's a thumbs up. Now, she never died leaving any young baby behind. The youngest was in his early 20s at the time. As we all know, life must go on. Years pass, and life took its course, where Joel began to visit the doctor's office until he was sent off to the Maypen Hospital, where he was back and forth from there. He was admitted at the Spanish Town Hospital on the 3rd of May, where the doctor requested for the family to have his left leg amputated. Now we all know he wasn't happy with the decision. The family had to tell him they would get a wooden leg for him, and he agreed. The surgery went well until on May 8, Mother's Day to be precise, one of the daughters got a call from the hospital that someone should visit. We all know the solution to that. He passed on, leaving his eight children and his stepson, 28 grandchildren and 27 great-grandchildren, three step-grandchildren and six step-great-grandchildren to carry on his legacy. From this day on forth, we will no longer hear Yes, pretty queen, and pretty daughter to the ladies, and yes, king to the gentlemen. But I must say, special thanks to Sharika Bell, a.k.a. Chuku, we call her Chuku, his daughter-in-law for her tremendously support to the family and friends who took the time out to cook. She was a cook at the time of his down and to the family and friends who took the time out to sat at his bedside during visiting hours at the hospital, you all know yourselves. And to Sharon Biggs, his stepdaughter-in-law, for her tireless back and forth with the family to get everything in order. And to the family and friends, I must say, life goes on. Be strong and live on. One love, one peace to haul his kings and queens. Okay, well done. At this time, I'll ask the congregation to stand while we will be asking the members of the family, the grieving family, to remain seated while we'll have the final prayer. So congregation, please stand. We have been doing well so far. Remember, we are to support the family. So let us do so orderly. All right, please assume an attitude of prayer. And so the family can be seated. The congregation stand while we pray. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank thee for your love and mercies towards us. We thank thee for a wonderful evening thus far. We thank thee for the life of Joel Fagan, 
and for the way he has positively impacted so many lives. We recognize that there is a void that is left. As comforter, we pray, God, that you will comfort those who mourn, that you will give them the strength to cope with their loss. We pray that they will look unto you as the author and finisher of their faith. Continue to provide for them. Continue to protect them. We pray that you will continue to unite them. And may they accept you as Lord and Savior. That in that great resurrection morning, they will all be when the saints go marching in. Guide us now as we go to the place of internment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, so we will leave the church in this order. We have our recessional hymn. The Lord's my shepherd I'll not want. Alright, at the singing of the chorus, the platform party will leave. And then the family members will follow and the rest of the congregation. Alright, let us sing those who are remaining. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastor's greed, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives in me. Amen. Mm -hmm. 